you will now believe it. But from the beginning. I was working on the next version of Coolphone and the number of errors I made in its design forced me to take a break from it. I put my shoes on and went outside. It turned out to be cold, so I went back for the hoodie. A walk in the fresh air will do me good, I thought not knowing what awaited me. After 4 minutes and 25 seconds of relaxing in the nature views, I saw little black dots in the distance. I will come closer, I said to myself and walked closer. It turned out that 3 SP modules also took a walk. It was such a strange situation that I only needed to find a PCB for another project in my left pocket. Hmm. Or maybe it wasn't like that. Maybe it's just the weather that affects me like that. Anyway, I have ESP modules and PCBs and I'm not hesitant to use them to make a weather station. I started by creating a prototype on a breadboard. I made an adapter from the ESP module to the breadboard so that its legs would not close together, but a moment later I got myself a module for programming ESP. I connected the programmer and ESP to the breadboard and connected them according to this diagram to make sure that the module communicated with the network. Then I added the BME280 sensor to the previous schematic and made sure it was working properly. Later I uploaded the code supporting the Blink program to the ESP module and checked how it works. Recently I have been dividing work on projects into several stages. Connecting a charging module, checking if it works. Connecting the temperature sensor, checking if it works. This way I can easily eliminate possible mistakes. If I created the entire prototype on a prototype board and then look for a bug, it would be difficult. Then, using previously created programs, I created final one, which I uploaded to the ESP module. The prototype works as it should, it's time to create a PCB. I created a schematic in Eagle based on the previously made prototype and then designed the PCB. I saved it as Gerber files and ordered them from PCBWay. I was missing a few components, so I desoldered them from the charging module. I applied solder paste and electronic components on it and soldered them with the hot air station. After connecting the power, the blue diode should be on and the red diode should be flashing, which means that the battery should be connected. As you can see, it works as it should. Later I soldered the gold pins and when I wanted to solder the BME module, it turned out that its dimensions didn't match to the footprint, but fortunately I could trim it because I will not use its two pins. I put some flux on and finished soldering. Now was the time for the housing, which I designed in Fusion. It consists of two parts, the battery and PCB container, and the cover, which must be attached with screws. 
I uploaded the file into Creality Slicer and started printing. These two elements took about 2 hours to print. Then I put the battery and PCB inside, put the jumper on and closed the case. Of course, I will not leave this project at this stage. The battery lasts about 6 hours of continuous use, which is therefore too little result. This is because the module is constantly sending data, which is unnecessary. I plan to solve this in such a way that the ESP will be in deep sleep for 15 minutes, then it will take a reading of the weather conditions, send data to the main module and go to the sleep mode again, over and over again. This will significantly extend the operating time of the weather station. This project is only the second part of my original smart home project. It is definitely worth waiting for the final effect. Thanks for watching this video.